So what were the general requirements to get into med school? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it definitely depends on what school you're applying for. Uh, if we want to talk about UBC, uh, two English courses um, for prereqs, uh, 90 units of coursework, the MCAT, and I think that's about it, yeah. Okay, were there any unique requirements for UBC specifically? No. So like some schools have like this thing called the Casper, which is a like online almost interview type thing that it's like a, it's a screening program. Like, right. But it, it gives you there's some like ethical scenarios and you have mm-hmm. to respond to it. Uh, some schools have that, UBC didn't. Uh, I think the unique thing that though was when I first was considering med, um, UBC had a lot of prereqs. So they had, yeah. you had to do like two years or yeah, a year of biology. Uh, I think like four chemistry courses, a bunch of different things. And right. actually halfway through my degree, they threw those out the window hmm. and just said you had to take English, which was actually <laughs> a little frustrating because again, me wanting to plan, you know, some of those prereq courses are really hard. Yeah, like uh, OCHEM? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like organic, surprisingly, organic chemistry is one of my better classes. Oh. But yeah, like there's some courses that were prereqs yeah. um, that, you know, I didn't do as well in. Right. Uh, and, you know, in retrospect, like, again, you, you're going to learn a lot of material and it's important to have. So I'm yeah. happy that I did all the prereqs. But, you know, in terms of if you want your grades higher. What is the average minimum required GPA um, to get in? Yeah. Um, so, again, if we're talking UBC specific, yeah. uh, it's, I think, about 70%. This is like the minimum yeah. uh, to apply 70% or I think a 3.0 on a 433 or something like that. Right. Um, if you look at UBC statistics, however, um, it kind of fluctuates. The, actually, the average GPA that they post that's adjusted. So, the interesting thing with UBC is they take your worst 30 units out. Yeah. So, your worst 30 units of your degree get thrown out the window um and so they call that the adjusted gpa and so the average adjusted gpa of accepted medical students was 88 percent last year okay which is pretty high yeah. you look at that you're like wow that means i need to if you're an sfu student yeah. this is my bias you need to get somewhere between a three six seven and like uh actually well you need to get above an a average because an a gets converted to an 87 yeah. percent you can be at like a 4.1 you're like no way yeah um However, there's hope because that was definitely not my GPA. Yeah. I was within that 367 to 4.0 range. Right. Um, and so you can actually also look at the different percentages. So um, I think about 50% of the students lined up in the 85% to 90% average. Okay. And then about 20% of students lined up in the 85 to 80 average. And then actually there was like three medical students who got in who were in like the 70 to 75% average. So again, that, that being said, like apply. Right. And it's so important to have those like Again, for me, my plan was I'm not this, you know, academic guru. Right. You know, I did well, um, but football took a lot of time and I focus a lot on my like research stuff and yeah. extracurriculars. And so you're they, they very much consider a holistic application. And so um, good to hear. Yeah. Like for me, my play was that holistic extracurricular aspect. That was like where I scored the highest. My grade right. was good. But again, it wasn't this like you know, 4.0 guy. Right. Um, and I think that shouldn't deter, you know, some of the absolutely. people listening to this, you know, if, if I know some people like may have wanted to do med and mm. they're thinking, Oh, I don't have that 4.0. I don't have that perfect GPA kind of just goes as a testament that you don't need that, exactly. but you should have, you know, a good holistic yeah. experience, um, you know, whether through volunteering, mm. um, the work. So as you said, you could have, you know, be in that 75 to 80% range Absolutely. and you may have never thought about med school, but it, it is, there are, there are people that do get in. Yeah. And like you have a wealth of experience, um, and, and it may be take you a little longer, but right. like, that's the goal. Yeah. Go Did you need reference letters? Yes. Gotcha. Um, so the reference letters for UBC come into play after you get an interview. Okay. Okay. So there's three different references that you need. Um, there's an academic reference letter. There's a service orientated reference letter, and there's a professional orientated reference letter. Um, and so I think the biggest one should be thinking about when you're doing your undergrad is your academic one, and that would either be a professor that you take a class with, yeah, or um, in a better case scenario, if you could maybe do some research or or even volunteer at a lab, and that you kind of you're in to get that academic reference. Yeah, right on. Um, can you speak to like the type of people that you chose for each one of your references? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, 
So for the so again, academic one is is focused on a professor. I think right. it's a professor or someone who's taught you. Yeah. Uh, so for that one, I I did some research in my fourth year. I was fortunate to get involved with uh, a directed studies project, and then that kind of opened up a bunch of doors for me to like be a research assistant. Yeah. In, well, on a volunteer basis, so pretty much uh, at a lab. So I asked that that professor. What is a good MCAT score to have to be competitive when applying to med schools? Mm -hmm. Besides having that minimum score of one twenty four in each section. Yeah. So again, it's all school dependent. Um, like you were saying, 124 is the minimum for UBC. Yeah. Uh, some schools don't have those minimum cutoffs. Okay. There's different rules if you're applying to an out-of-province school. So say I was applying to University of Alberta, I, need, I would need to get, I think, at least, if I'm out-of-province, 128 on each section. Okay. Whereas if I was an in-province Alberta student, I would only need to get 124 minimum on right. each section. Okay. So, excuse me. <laughs> that being said, um, there's four different sections in the MCAT. And so they summate those scores to a total of, I think the lowest possible is like 490 or 480 something. And the maximum is like 523. Yeah. So 500, though, is the 50th percentile median. Um, and so UBC's average MCAT score of accepted, again, applicants is 515. And so when you look that up, that's like 93rd percentile. And hmm. like, wow. That's yeah. Crazy. And again, that wasn't my story. I was... I was, yeah, like, I wasn't a 515 person. I think yeah. I was, like, or, or, yeah, like, 83rd percentile. I don't know, something. Right. It was, like, early 80s. And, again, I was freaking out. You know what your score, uh, aggregate score was? Like, yeah. Yeah, 510. Yeah, okay. But I've heard people, so, yeah, so 510, like, it's not bad. It's okay. Yeah. It's not amazing. It's, like, 83rd percentile. You're, like, oh, I wish I could get that. Right. You know, because you would think, like, oh, if I get the average competitive score, then I'm bound to get in mm -hmm. um but i was 510 and i know also people who have like 506 which is like 70th percentile yeah and they got in this year right so like there's no set score that you need to get and that's like the whole crazy thing I, at least at ubc again very holistic right do your best type of thing accomplish it but yeah five, i would say like a 512 would be a great score cool um, which would be like 80th great what was the application or the interview process like as much as detail as you can give because yeah. i know you can't give all the yes. minute details okay. yeah for sure um, but no the stuff that's public so the application uh is yeah different phases so the well i think one of the big ones was first you have to do like what what's some research experience that you've had so you right. list out all the poster presentations um article that you've published um yeah like that's pretty crazy for us. yeah <laughs> um oral presentations that you've done so that's yeah. like one section another section is you put all your grades that's where they get the aggregate uh, gpa score and then the big section though is your um non-academic diversity of experience mm -hmm. leadership section so that one actually has uh 24 25 i believe different activities that you can put in and so you want to theoretically be filling that thing all up so i think there's like three sections on leadership that you can fill in three sections on um working with others five on uh i don't know caring for other people like right different sections and there's 12 like diversity of experience so that's another section and then there's also your employment history um and those are kind of the big ones um, okay yeah. and they create a score based on that's great that.